and there is markings and it does say 585 which is gold yay we have <laughs> we have gold woohoo all right here is a vintage box Ooh. okay so this is oh cremins ha 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 there we go yay we have some cremins and okay let's just look at these i'm excited about these and okay we have a little book in there how to care for your cremins fine quality jewelry oh look at how cute this is a little book i'm this makes me happy the modern stuff no um this yes okay we have it says fort knox pure gold how much do we want to bet that this is not pure gold? <laughs> hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, AKA Lily Works. And we have a men's um, accessories unbagging today from shopgoodwill.com. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, I am a full-time stay-at-home mom, part-time reseller, and I resell a lot of jewelry. Um, and I also really like selling men's accessories, including like tie bars, cufflinks, bolos, things like that. And I've been getting some comments and also watching some videos of people who are doing unjarrings or unboxings, and they come across men's accessories, and they don't know a lot about it. So I don't, I'm not an expert by any means, but I know enough. Um, and I've sold, I guess, a good handful of men's accessories to have some experience in it. Um, so I <clears throat> bid on this lot and I won the bid at $56. Now I also paid tax, $337. I paid shipping, which was $784 handling. And then altogether it came to $70. <clears throat> Sorry, seventy dollars and seventy one cents. <clears throat> you guys are not going to be able to see my face again. I am still extremely sick. I had to cancel my birthday outing with my girlfriends. Uh, my birthday is April twenty fourth, and I'm turning thirty two. And so I decided to celebrate by wearing my uh, ginormous Heidi Doss for you guys right here, <laughs> and just feeling um, fancy from like here down <laughs> for this. Um, men's lot unboxing so what's interesting is that these all come in like boxes so that will be fun so while i'm un undoing this i have not looked at these whatsoever um some of the most typical brands that you will see for men's accessories are swank is probably number one um and you can I will put up the Swank logo. It'll either be written out Swank or it will have an S with like a shape around it. And um, there's also Hickok, Anson, and Foster. So those are like the most common. But there's also um, Cremins. Some of the jewelry brands that you are used to seeing like Cremins um, <clears throat> is also part of the men's accessories. And there's also uh, Speedel, which is like also for watches. There's Hadley. And <clears throat> um, I've sold a couple uh, cufflinks for a pretty good profit. Actually, really, really good profit. There was one um, pair that I sold for, I think, over $150. And it was a Intaglio, maybe a 19 karat or gold filled, uh, probably antique dog cufflink it might have been like a hunting dog or something like that but uh those I think I paid cents for those <clears throat> there's also some Sykes and Strandberg they were marked on the back those were gold filled I think I got like $70 for those and then there's also br brands that you know would typically sell well like Tif Tiffany and Company or Cartier or Chanel but the ones that do really well that are not those high-end designer brands are usually that they are like nine karat gold filled or like a modernist sterling, um, MCM sterling, maybe like jade and nine karat gold, things like that. Those should um, bring you some good profit. So I see some modern pieces <laughs> mixed in and... Um, 
a lot of things I have not, a lot of brands I have not um, ever heard of before. So this is going to be interesting. All right, let's get into it. All right, the first pair definitely looks like a modern pair that you might just pick up at like a wedding store or something like that. Oh, that's that's something I should probably mention. Like who buys cufflinks and, you know, things like that? Well, <clears throat> my husband, <laughs> for one, I've been getting in, him into that. So um, if you're interested in ordering shirts that you can wear cufflinks with, because women and men can wear them, it's called a French cuff, um, where you can fold it over and put a little cufflink in there. Um, also people that are in formal events like prom, weddings, things like that, people who are doing a retro vintage theme wedding would really go for the vintage cufflinks. And then there's also just collectors just like jewelry who are maybe men or women who are not necessarily going to wear them, but they are going to collect them. So this is called Brand Q. This one um, doesn't really have a brand besides Brand Q. These are very modern, sparkling. Uh, I could see someone wearing these to like Easter Sunday or a wedding or something like that. Um, and these, that is what I will probably sell them as is like in like a wedding formal event type thing. All right, here is a blue box and I'm hoping it's vintage <laughs> because I really like selling vintage more. Uh, is it vintage? So it looks like a money clip. So. Uh, I do like selling money clips and it has this big thing in the back and what is on it? Uh, it is a helicopter. Looks like it's on like a pewter. Um, it's made out of pewter and there's no name. I'm going to try taking it off. Yeah, super shiny, never been used. Let's see. Oh, okay. So it says HM2000. So 2000 is vintage and then HM. Hmm, I have not heard of that. So I will have to look that up. So this is a little vintage money clip. Okay, next let's do this little guy. Okay, we have, it says Fort Knox pure gold. How much do we want to bet that this is not pure gold? All right, how do we get this out? It is heavy. All right, what does it say? Woo! It says, it says, um, replica of gold brick stored at Fort Knox. Fort Knox 9.99 G fine gold. Interesting. I'm wondering if this is worth anything. I just got my fingerprints all over it. Okay, I'm going to try to Google lens this one and see if it is anything. Google Lens. Okay, so Fort Knox two inch gold bar collectible. And it is going for $12. <laughs> so yeah, definitely not real gold, but it feels nice and heavy, like good um, learning tool, I guess. So there's that. Let's do this. This one looks like a vintage box. Okay. This one says, an important link in RCA Victor's leadership, which is RCA Victor factory service. So if this is a, like a brand particular, um, like made for the employees or something like that, that might be just more of like a collectible piece than a wearable piece. So if like this is RCA factory store and there is RCA on the little, um, the little cars. So I actually am more excited about that because things like that, um, like tie tax and things that are, um, like a business specific vintage piece are there's collectors out there for it so yay little cars with rca don't know what that company is but okay so another modern there's like smudge smudge um it almost feels like somebody's makeup 
got uh, thrown around. So we have Banana Republic, which is a mall brand. So these are just some really pretty burgundy maroon enamel cufflinks. And I'm trying to see if they are marked Banana Republic at all. If they were just thrown into a lot. No, they're not marked anywhere on the cufflink itself. Um, let's see, they were $28 probably at Banana Republic. The box needs to be cleaned, but these I can sell, like I said, prom, wedding, things like that. All right, tucks and tails. What is in here? Oh, okay, I've sold these before. Not for a lot, <clears throat> and I think these actually uh, fell out of here. So these are little, um, these go on your buttons. I forgot what they're called, but they're textured on the back, and then they're little um, black cabochons on the front, and we have four of them. So those are for like tux buttons. We have Pronto Umo. 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 These were sold at Men's Warehouse for $24.99. They were clearance though, but these were Men's Warehouse. Oh, this was, this is a tie bar. So gold tone and silver tone. Really nice box. Like that. Okay, we have this guy that is not in anything and it is a tie tack number three and it looks like it's on a flag. So with tie tacks, check the back because sometimes tie tacks can be marked gold, gold filled, sterling um, for people that have been service um, in service for a number of years or at a business for a number of years and they get certain tie tacks of certain... Um, precious metals to award them. So this one is not anything. This one might just be, I don't even know. This one just says made in China. So I'm not even sure what that is. All right here, this kind of looks like it matches this one. So I'm wondering if it does. Yeah, it does. So another RCA and this one is the tie clip. What is else is in here? What is this? RCA? Why does Oh, huh. Uh, tie up tidy profits with RCA factory service. Huh, this kind of, I don't even know what this piece is. Interesting. We have those, those go together. Look at this green one. Okay, so we have swank and we have, it looks like, nephrite jade possibly. So these ones go around the outside of the cuff with this little chain detail. I think that these are gonna do well, especially being in the box and they they appear to be like 60s. Um, so let me try to show you guys if it is marked on here at all. Uh, the swank marking, wow. Usually swank is marked. <clears throat> I'm not seeing it on here. But if you're looking for a marking, look inside of the bars here or here, or look on this little long torpedo bar. Otherwise it could just be on the backing itself. I'm not seeing it, but this is a genuine stone and not marked anything else. <clears throat> so. All right, I'll fix that later. I do like that one. All right, let's see what this is. So we have, um, it looks like cufflinks B and a tie tack B. So I have sold monogrammed um, cufflinks before. And as you can see on here, You guys can see on there it is marked swank right at the top which is kind of what I was looking for this is a set in its original box I will sell that one it's like on a matte silver tone let's grab this one this one feels heavy okay this one is the foster like I was saying and it has the it has two tie tacks in there I think one of these tie tacks does not belong in here. So Foster Fine Men's Jewelry. This, I don't know which one looks like it matches. 
neither. Um, <clears throat> let's see if it's marked. So this one is marked. These cufflinks are marked. Let's pull it out. So this, these cufflinks um, do not appear to be old, new old stock. There's like verdigris on them, which needs to be cleaned. But inside there, it is, says Foster right there. And I think Foster does do, just like I think Swank and Anson, they all do um, some sterling silver and I think uh, gold filled versions of some of their cufflinks. This one has no mark on it. And then this one has no mark on it. <clears throat> okay. So we have that one. Okay. What's this one? Oh, okay. These ones have to be my favorite. These probably are my favorite cufflinks by far. So far and probably for the rest of these because uh, when I go to antique stores, these catch my attention. Um, let's pull one of these out for you. It says <coughs> on the cuff. And let me hold this guy up for you guys. And the camera is not doing it justice as per usual, um, but there's blue and purple, and that is a Rivoli stone. Um, let's see, no mark, but I don't even care. Maybe I'll make my husband wear these. Ah, uh, he's kind of rough though. He probably would break it but stunning. So I believe that the pink and the green is called a watermelon Rivoli. Some people, and I probably have done this in the past as well, is like when the color changes, people still put watermelon Rivoli, even though it's not the pink and the green. Um, this one is the purple and blue, but still so, so stunning, like so sparkly. That Rivoli point with all those facets make it just really sparkle. Okay, that one was my favorite. Okay. Oh, oh. Gold Waters, Arizona. And this one says genuine sodalite. So I think around mid century is when they started bringing a lot of stones into like the men's accessory, like a lot of stones, like, like you saw the, the jade and even rose quartz and things like that. This one is a sodalite. I'm gonna see if it's set in anything but I think this one will do well because it's in the box and if I can get it out I'm wondering if it says like sterling or anything on the back all right no it does not say anything on the back all it says is genuine sodalite so fix that later but there is that one Lovely. I really like that one. Even it, even though it's vintage, it's very wearable today. That's nice. Okay, this one feels very, very heavy again. Oh, that's why it's uh, so heavy is because there is a lot of cufflinks in one box. Yay, this is kind of what I like. Okay, yay, let's get into this. Okay, so right off the bat, I see these Mother of Pearl chunks right here. I'm going to flip these to see if there's any... Um, No, no mark on these, but I really like them. These are some Mother of Pearl squares, and it has some good like height to it. They're not really... Like, the chunks are not really set in the silver tone. Okay, we have this one in acid and acid. Uh, I would bet that these are swank. Let's see. Oh, are they not marked? Oh, yep, they are. They are swank. They say swank up here. So an S. So it could be for someone's first name or last name or something like that. <clears throat> All right, we have these crowns. And this one has an A on it on the back side right here, probably for Anson, most likely. Checkerboard with 
little crowns. Then we have this. What? This is very, very crudely done. <laughs> very, very. I'm not even sure what I'm looking at, and it kind of looks broken. Um, there we go. Is he in a race car? I don't even know. Let's see. This is the part. Looks like it can pop back in. Um, there, did I do it? Okay, we did it. <clears throat> so, what is this? A race car? I don't know. This guy looks, uh, <laughs> he looks a little funky. And I really don't like it when they do that black enamel, um, pooled inside because they do that a lot with, um, like Roman soldiers or Egyptian and it flakes pretty easily <clears throat> on the men's accessories. Uh, this is eh, not, not that exciting. Like, okay, this is the example. <laughs> this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about with the black and flanking, flaking. And this is swank. Yeah, it probably matched these, maybe. Um, it has a little tiny uh, stone chip or rhinestone chip in there and I could just try to just clean off all of that to make it all silver tone. Okay, we have a little F right here, little F. And <coughs> it's a little tie pin, tie tack. It does say Hickok USA on the back. Not sure if the F is Hickok because obviously you could switch it out. I would say most likely. Um, and then we have this one, which is like a little gold oval, gold tone oval. And again, I'm just checking the pin to see if there's any marks on it. No. Okay. All right, we have those. Okay, next we have this big box. Oh, it opens this way. What is this? All right, Divi, no, Divi, Dewey, what is this? Okay, look it. There's a guy on the back with a funky nose and this is for, I don't know, United States Marine Corps. There's a patent number on it and then there is a button and then there was something that went in here. I want to Google Lens this. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> All right, I looked I looked this up and this is a golf golfing divot tool, which I don't know what that is <laughs> at all. And then I think this is the golf ball marker. I don't think this is valuable at all. I don't I don't know. This is <clears throat> I don't know if I would consider that like a men's accessory. I mean, I will still sell it if I can make money, but yeah. Okay, so we have a squire, and these kind of are giving me Art Deco vibes. Let's see, this has just a patent number on the backing there. <clears throat> Sometimes you can look up the patent number and see which brand, which maker used that backing or that hardware in their process. And th that can maybe even help you date your piece. So we have those and then I don't think this goes with it. Oh, this one is an intaglio, which means it was carved behind the glass, into the glass from behind. And this one says X15 and it looks like a rocket. <clears throat> it doesn't look like it's really high quality though. Um, you can see some of the bubbles behind this glass cabochon and no mark on it. It's just a little tiny stubby <laughs> tie clip, but this is probably going to go to a collector of, you know, space memorabilia. Okay. Here is a black Ooh, I do like these. These are going to bring someone fun, a lot of fun. So these I would consider novelty cufflinks because they're not necessarily for style. They're more like for 
humor, novelty, if someone is like, has a, has a very fun personality, they might like these. This is a Cuban cigar um, enameled cufflink. There is no maker's mark <clears throat> on this either. So, but those I'm definitely selling. That would be really fun. Okay, this one looks modern in a modern box. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. The reason I say that <clears throat> is because of this texture on the back. I see that a lot in vintage jewelry. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, yeah, with how sick I am, so it says $2, someone left their tag on it. Uh, with how sick I am, lately I might not put out a, another what sold over the weekend video because I'm just kind of shipping as I can when I'm feeling up to it. <clears throat> and I think that a, yeah, we'll see how it goes, but this, uh, this, this, uh, has been kicking my butt for sure. But these actually feel like onyx stones or black glass. I'm looking to see if there's a maker on any of these pieces. It comes with the the tie tack, the tie bar, and the cufflinks. So that's pretty nice. And I probably will not photograph them in this box. They do not pop at all. They do not stand out from other listings if I were to just show the box like this. <clears throat> so I want it to look really nice and then and then obviously ship it <clears throat> in the box. All right, here's a little one. Oh, okay. It says Robin Eilers Jewelers. And it looks like a genuine pearl tie tack. I'm going to try to get this one out. And there is markings and it does say 585 which is gold yay we have <laughs> we have gold woohoo um finally <clears throat> so that was great so i paid 70 dollars, and we have the pearl and the gold i don't know if this part is gold this backing is gold i haven't ever seen that being gold but you never know so we have a gold and pearl tie tack. Yay. That should bring some good money. And that obviously that is very wearable today. All right. We have Alpha Perry. And again, it looks like those tuxedo buttons. And it looks like they might have possibly come with cufflinks. I'm not exactly 100%, but <clears throat> people do purchase these um, tuxedo button things. Those are not as beautiful as the other ones with the swirling on the back. So I'm not sure if I will sell these or not. Those are a maybe. All right, here is a vintage box. Ooh, okay. So this is, oh, Kremens. Ha ha ha. <laughs> there we go. Yay, we have some Kremens. And, okay, let's just look at these. I'm excited about these. And, okay, we have a little book in there. How to care for your Kremens fine quality jewelry. Oh, look at how cute this is, a little book. I'm, this makes me happy. The modern stuff, no. Um, this, yes. All right, it, it is hard to come out because um, it's like brittle from being so old. So even these like torpedo, torpedoes um, on the back, have little amber stones and then this is uh cremens it says patented and then it says 14 karat rolled gold overlay which i would expect from cremens these also look like they could be um, mon monogrammed with an etching so these are blank which is great because they have not been etched with a monogram yet so perfect Someone was selling these for $9 at one point. <clears throat> so, yay, that would that's going to do pretty well. And it still has a little Kremen sticker on the back. Okay, so we have a few more. <clears throat> we have Swank. It says men prefer Swank. These look um, more feminine with that, like, scrolling and stuff. Yes, these are marked Swank. 
in their gold tone. Men prefer swing. Well, Rachel prefers <laughs> uh, 14 karat gold crements. 14 karat gold, rolled gold crements. <laughs> okay, oh, another swank. Very Art Deco looking. Yeah, even the branding with the gold and the black and the lines. So yeah, this has three pieces in this set. I can imagine putting this at like mm, $25 probably <clears throat> for this set. Yeah, most cufflinks I usually price, if they're like the Swank, Hickok, um, the other brands, Foster, Anson, they're usually like, I price them around like $15. Okay, so we have a 10 year. That might mean something. 10 years at a company, they might have gotten some silver or something. So we will see. And there is a blue stone in there. Oh, should we check the blue stone before we take it off? Let's do that. Let's see if the blue stone is anything. Oh, yes it is. It's going all the way to sapphire. Woohoo! Okay, do you guys want to see? Sometimes <laughs> I wonder if you guys can see what I'm showing. All right, so here's the ne needle over on this side. Go ahead and watch it move with me. Should be pretty obvious that it's moving all the way to Sapphire, which is right over here. Um, that is great. And then this says on the back, what does it say? It says 10K. But it says, let's see, something to 10K, V to 10K, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys and then we're just gonna Google Lens it to see if there's any other listings and maybe they figured it out. I don't know if you guys can see right there. All right, I'm gonna Google Lens this to see if it's anything. <clears throat> Obviously it's something. Okay, <clears throat> so the Google Lens didn't really show me anything, but there's like a little congratulations little thing there. And then on the back, it says Long Beach Memorial, 10 year corporate symbol lapel pin. And when I Google Googled that, and I believe it's a hospital, um, there was something similar on eBay, but not with the sapphire. For $175, it was 10 karat gold though. So, yay! That is amazing! <laughs> Hooray! Okay, we have four more. This one looks to be not in English. <laughs> it says uh, Hako Date, Hako Date, something like that. Um, and there's the cufflinks right there. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't even know. Must have been some kind of souvenir or something. Don't even know what these colors, oh, you know what this is? It's probably one of those like moon, moon, I'm sorry, mood. How could they do that though? How could they do a mood tie clip? Like, are they testing the mood of, of your tie and your, and your clothes? Okay. Well, that's weird, but mm, I don't know. Someone might like that. I don't even know where that is. All right. This one is some serious jewelry. Okay. This is uh is it the rebels in star wars or something so i think this is more modern let me go ask my husband all right so i have my husband here he's going to tell us what these cufflinks are because i don't know oh uh, those are star wars what and what are they i think that's rebel rebel the rebel forces yeah 
Let me confirm. Do you want these? Sure. Are you excited? Yes. See, what did I tell you? Okay. <laughs> Here you go. That is my gift to you for taking you care go. of the children all day. Yeah, the Rebel Alliance. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Who was right? That's what I said before I did you even a thing. came. No. Nope. Who who said that? Who said who said it was a Rebel Alliance? They know. I said that before okay. you even came in here. R is for Rachel and Rebel. Okay, so Good two job. more. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, we have two more. Ooh, this is an Esquire. Looks like there's a knife. <laughs> a little knife accessory? That, I don't know. Could it be a pendant? Could this be like a woman's accessory for protection? It is a knife. A little, little tiny one that comes out. Yeah, I'm sure I could not use this for protection because it would take me forever <laughs> to take out. I'd be like, hold on one moment. Let me protect myself. Oh. This doesn't... This is like a screwdriver. <laughs> Let's see if there's another thing that pops out. Okay, this one is a knife. And it is extremely tarnished. Extremely on one side. On this side. like, And it's making my fingers... Yeah, and it does smell really old. <laughs> really, really old. Like someone's garage. Um, someone's old garage. I don't know. Do we think that's silver? Oh, oh, that's why. It says Anson Sterling. Like I was telling you guys, Anson Sterling right there. Fun. Okay, I don't even know how much this little guy <laughs> would be. That is so interesting. Then what are the cufflinks? Pioneer. Interesting. I have not heard of that. So there's Pioneer right there on the back. I have not sold Pioneer, but these seem to be an, a nice quality cufflink. Okay, we got some sterling. We have some gold. And is that a bug? Okay, no. <laughs> I was going to say sterling, gold, and a bug. All right, last one. Dun, 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 dun. Do you guys think we've paid... Well, definitely, definitely. Do you guys think we're going to make some good money on this lot? It's a learning experience, if anything. <gasps> a Pierre Cardin? Okay. I hope that this is what this is. Pierre Cardin is definitely a bolo brand to look out for. Belts, um, men's accessories like this one. Let's see if this one is marked. It has a little like queen coin right there and it did not have any fingerprints until I touched it so it's probably new oh there is no that's not a mark I like lifted this up and there was like a little divot in there but it's probably just making for making that stay on okay so there is no mark on here but I'm I'm pretty sure with how there's no wear on this or anything that this is supposed to <clears throat> be in this box just like that yeah just it's too it goes in there too nicely but I will put up the mark for Pierre Cardin so that you guys can find it it's even on jewelry I think even women's jewelry possibly um so yeah definitely a bolo brand to look out for so that was exciting oh this wasn't like, let's, let's, let's have some thoughts. Okay. So this wasn't a lot where I'm like, woohoo, everything's great. Cause I think if it was like all vintage, I would be more excited. Feel like I would have more things to share with you. The tux buttons are not that exciting. Uh, golf stuff is not that exciting. And like the newer, more modern stuff you can get at Macy's or Men's Warehouse, not that exciting. Um, but you guys might have learned some things about tie tacks. Don't pass over those lapel pins or the tie tacks definitely check them over because I, there's been so often that I have found um gold um gold silver gold plated um or, or even like some kind of unique like world war one two collectible type thing so uh yeah I am 
I want to know your feedback. If you guys have any input on any uh, men's accessories and jewelry, let us know down in the comments. We love to learn more from you guys. What was your highest cufflink sale? Uh, I wanted to tell you that there are some, I think it's Tiffany's, there's some, they're pretty desirable. They're Tiffany's men's knot cufflinks that sell for a really great profit. <clears throat> there's nothing, like cufflinks and stuff are not like brooches and jewelry where they're unsigned and you have to try to figure out if it's a Juliana or, or a Weiss or something like that or... <clears throat> whatever um it's pretty much like straightforward uh google lens is your friend and uh definitely i think for listing men's jewelry keywords are really important don't just put men's cufflinks black and silver you know don't don't do that like try to do your best to put like mid-century modern, atomic, the brand, um, formal event, um, dapper, <laughs> uh, or even like I'm not a clothing reseller but there's some other like words in like the fashion industry that you can look into that are more geared towards men. I'm trying to think maybe like Hollywood Regency which is like the the black gold opulent um blingy type jewelry and things like that so and I also know a lot of men maybe it's just like personally but I feel that a lot of men who really like vintage really gravitate towards like towards art deco lines uh tell me if I'm wrong but I really feel like a lot of men that I like sold to and things like that really like are collectors of Art Deco stuff. So Art Deco, if you see the Art Deco lines and styles, definitely put that as a keyword. If you see something that is modernist by a designer, definitely use those as keywords. And I hope that this video helped you. Um, <clears throat> if you are new to selling men's lots, uh, hopefully this will get you guys going. And yeah, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like this and more content like it, go ahead and check out my latest hauls as well. If you really like jewelry, I have like four parts for one auction that I purchased. <clears throat> so we have that. I'm usually doing what sold over the weekend videos. Unfortunately, <coughs> I usually do that on a Monday and I've just been <clears throat> really sick so I'm trying to just take it easy and do like more easy things like unboxing with you guys but um yeah and I will see you guys in my next video whatever that is and make sure you guys are out there thrifting and antique store shopping and auctioning <laughs> or on auction bidding and uh, estate sale shopping I can't wait to go to an estate sale someday um so that you guys can live generously bye guys Thank you.